Okay, got a student request for a video regarding the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Okay, finding the minimum uncertainty in a position or velocity measurement. That's the question here. This is from homework assignment number 12, uh, 12.3. And uh, so here's what, here's what we got. So it's essentially the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And the first thing I'm gonna do when I read this question is, is panic, right? Second thing I'm gonna do is probably read the explanation uh, and I'm going to find that we're being uh, asked to probe the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which states that the range of x times the range of uh, momentum is greater than or equal to Planck's constant over 4 pi. Okay, that's in the explanation. Let me make another note about this and say it again. This is the range in which we might find x or the uncertainty in position. Can you read my writing? In the uncertainty in position of particle. Okay? That's the range in which we might find x or it's the uncertainty in the position of the particle, okay? And this is the uncertainty of momentum. And I know that because I read it, okay? Now you know that momentum is equal to mass times velocity, right? And so oftentimes we'll know the mass of the particle so this could be, uh, I'm going to write this, okay, this is really easy to, it's easy to get lost in. If we know mass, then the range of momentum, or the uncertainty of momentum, is equal to mass times the uncertainty in velocity, okay? All right. If we know the mass of the particle that we're talking about, then the, then, then the delta momentum is equal to mass times delta, right? Because this is known, all right? So this is what we're being asked about. Let's go back to the question now. Actually, let me move this layer down. Move this layer down. Come to this layer, and we'll probably disappear that one. Okay, so let's go back over here and say, all right, so an atom of carbon all right, so I have no idea what's being asked yet, right? An atom of carbon has a radius of 67 picometers. So let's go over here to, and we'll go to our new layer and we'll disappear that layer and we'll say, all right, I'm gonna, I guess I'll write this over. Pretend like I don't know this yet, so I'm gonna put that in my notes. The range of X times the range of momentum is greater than or equal to Planck's constant over four pi. Now Planck's constant is a constant, four is a constant, and pi is a constant, right? So what that means is that the relationship between what we can know about the position and what we can know about the momentum, they're reciprocally related. All right, that's a little subtle. There's no way I would have understood that uh, when I was uh, um, in introductory chemistry. So I'm gonna recommend that we don't understand it yet. If you don't understand it yet, let's just do some problems and it'll begin to make more sense to you, okay? So the range in, in position, the range in position uh, times the range in momentum is greater than or equal to some number. Okay, that's what we're, that's what we're saying here. Let's go back over here. Aha, yes, remember an atom of carbon has a radius of 67 picometers. So the radius of a carbon atom is 67 picometers, 67 picometers. And in case we need this in meters, I'm gonna go ahead and write it right now, times 10 to the minus 12 meters. Just one second, hold one second. Is that enough for me, I guess? Yes, I do want to eat it. No, okay, no, okay. I'll leave it. Have you already had lunch? No, so I'm gonna go get it. Okay, feel free to eat in here. Yeah, no. Okay. All right, pardon me. Um, so, that's the radius of a carbon atom. So far, we don't understand what's going on yet, right? Let's keep going back here. All I'm doing is just writing this down. A carbon atom has a radius of 67 picometers and an average orbital speed of electrons in it 
the electrons, aha, the electrons in it, the average speed is 1.3 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. So I'm glad I put it in meters because I can see this is also going to be meters, right? Let's go back over here now. And now we're going to say the velocity is equal to one, oops, of the, the electron in it, okay, is equal to 1.3 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. All right. The average orbital speed of the electrons in it is 1.3 times 10. I'm sorry. Yeah, times 10 to the, to, I don't know if I said that right. 1.3 times 10 to the 7 meters per second. Okay. Calculate the least possible uncertainty in a measurement of the speed of an electron in the carbon atom. Okay, there's the hard question now. Calculate the least possible uncertainty in the measurement of the speed. All right, so let's go back over here and let's say, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to black here and, and set myself up. So I know roughly where the electron is. It's the range of the location of the electron, right? I know roughly what that is because I know that the electron, here's a carbon nucleus, which is really 12, or no, 6 plus, right? A nucleus is 6 plus on it of a carbon. And I've got these electrons racing around. Right? They're go racing around this nucleus, and uh, it turns out the range in which they are is the diameter of the carbon atom, right? Okay, so which is equal to 2 times the radius, which is equal to 67 times 2, 67 times 2. 134, 134 times 10 to the minus 12 meters, okay? So, which is equal to 134 times 10 to the minus 12 meters, right? Okay. So, that being said, we know what that is. Now, we know what the mass of an electron is, right? Your Alex calculator is going to have it as an m sub e. Let me come over here. Let me come over here. Alex calculator. Mass of an electron is where? It's right here. See that? Mass of an electron in kilograms is here. So we know what the mass is, okay? It's 9.10938 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms, because this is kilograms here. 9.10938. Uh, the mass is equal to 9.10938 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, right? Is the, uh, uh, is the mass, all right? We know what the mass is. So let's rewrite this equation up here as saying delta x is equal to, I'm going to write a different version of delta p now. I'm going to say mass delta v is equal to Planck's constant over 4 pi. Now I know it's equal to if it's the minimum, right? Because it, I was being asked what's the minimum uncertainty? And we know that, that the uncertainty is greater than or equal to this constant here, right? So the minimum is gonna be when it's equal to. I just made a comment about that. You might wanna go back and, and listen to that comment again. Okay, it's a really subtle. The minimum is gonna be, be when it's equal to, all right? Now that I've got that, aha, this is what I'm being asked in the question, delta V, right? So delta V then, What's the minimum uncertainty in the velocity is going to equal Planck's constant over 4 pi times delta x, which I know 
times the mass of the electron, which I know. Okay. So let's come over here and put those in the calculator. Uh, I've got pi in my calculator. I've got Planck's constant in my calculator. So this should be relatively uh, straightforward. Let's come back over here. I've got those notes in front of me. Let's come here and let's say, let's clear that out. The top was Planck's constant, which is h, which is right here. You see it? Okay. h. And that's divided by 4. Okay. Divided by 4 times pi times the, um, where was I here? Times the delta x, which we figured that already. That's 134 times 10 to the negative 12. Come back over here. 137 times 10. to the minus 12. Okay, and I think there was one more thing in there, was there? Times the mass of the electron, yep. Times the mass of the electron. Times the mass of the electron, boom. Okay, now I was careful to, um, oops, I don't want that. I was careful to, uh, Careful to set this up. There's Planck's constant. The exponent, the exponent is here, right? Times 10 to negative 34. I was careful to make sure that I had all of the uh, units correct. I did meters in the beginning. It turns out Planck's constant is in joule seconds. So I think what I'm going to do before I hit enter is I'm going to make sure all my units are correct. Let me get rid of this. Let me come back over here and say delta V is equal to Planck's constant over 4 pi delta x and the mass of the electron, right? That's what we had in the previous notes. Now let's come over here and say this is joule seconds, right? 4 has no units, pi has no units, delta x has units, it's meters, and this has units, it's kilograms, right? So I see I need to rewrite joules. Well, a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared kilogram meter squared per second squared. That's what a joule is. Times seconds over meters and kilograms, okay? So I can see the kilograms cross off. I can see one of my meters crosses off and it leaves me with one left, right? And one of my seconds crosses off and that leaves me with that. And aha, this was meters per second, right? Because it, it was the velocity meters per second and that's what I'm left with meters per second and everything else crosses off so this is legit all right units are good everything else is good let's go back and see what the number was let's go back and do that let's go hit enter so we're gonna get four two two five oh nine point seven eight three lost my pen there four two two five oh nine point seven eight three get rid of that come back here Let's go a different color. 422509.783. And that was in meters per second, right? So what we've got to do now is we also have to do how many sig figs we've got. All right, so there's three sig figs here, right? Three sig figs there, 134. This has three sig figs, and everything else has more. A lot, a bunch, let's say eight. This has, I don't know, five or six. Yep, these are these are exact. Okay, we're not, not quite exact, but a bunch. Okay, so it looks like it's gonna be three sig figs. Now, it turns out, I, I admit that, that this, this started out with two sig figs, and when I multiplied it by two, uh, I got 134, so, So, um, what am I doing here? So that's three sig figs, but this is, I don't even know actually, because this is like 67 plus 67. It's really gonna give me 134, right? That's three sig figs, but if I multiply by two, I don't know the answer to that. Does this have two sig figs or three? I don't know. I'm gonna say three. 
All right, we'll see what Alex lets us do. Um, now, yeah, let's go back over here now. This is complicated, isn't it? Oh, percent, uh-oh. Percent. A percentage of the average speed. All right, so I know that uh, the if the average speed is 1.3 times 10 to the seven, and uh, my my velocity, my dv, my my the range in velocity is 422. Uh, oh, I've got, I'm left with two sig figs. It, it won't even matter, right? So go back over here. I know this is complicated. Let's go back here. And come here. Get rid of that one. So the percent is is uh, my average speed is 1.37 or 1.3 times 10 to the 7 meters per second and my range is 422 uh, what was it 422 509 uh, meters per second right and so I'm supposed to write this now as a as a um, fraction of my times 100 will give me the percent okay so 422 510 still in my calculator over here yes I'm here taking a long time I know for uh, let's go back over here 422 509 divided by divided by 1.3 times 10 to the 7 times 100 is equal to 3.3 percent see that wow look at that 3.3 percent because it was two sig figs and I am done wow that was a booger wasn't it okay let me know if you want to do it you want to see another example uh, it's complicated obviously what you need to do is you needed to start out with your what you need to do is you need to start out where where, where were we here we started out with this that's where we need to start out and then we need to, to define what each of these um, you know what each of these numbers mean or what each of these variables mean and that's momentum mass times velocity so you need to be able to identify what's the mass of the particle you're talking about what's the what's the range and velocity that you're talking about uh, and what these uncertainties mean all right good luck